Greetings, welcome back to Pink Odd Bird. Today we are here to continue working on our junky junk journal for our junk journal challenge for the month of March 2020. So today we are at the point of our process. Well, some of you might be ahead and that's okay. Some of you guys are super duper crafters. <laughs> Today we're going to be working on putting our signatures in our book and then I think we might actually even have time to get started putting some of our junk into our book in this video. So let's go ahead and get started so we can get a move on. So as you already know in the last video we worked on creating our junky cover. So this part is done and of course I have my signatures that we've also worked on here. So. For a moment, I'm going to set the book aside so that I can show you the supplies that I believe that we're going to need today very quickly. And if we need something else, I'll grab it as we go. So the first thing is scissors. I do believe we will need those. The other thing that I like to always grab is my bone folder. I, it's just, it's part of me. I don't really do very much without it. A strip of paper, and it can be a scrap paper. This is a scrap. The strip of paper should be the height of your signature and the width of your spine. So for me, that's 10 and a quarter by two and a half. I have some string here and I've chosen this string because I don't typically use this string very much. And so I thought that I would use this in my book since the book is for me, I would you know, just get some of it used up and, and as the binding for my book. And because this thread is not waxed, I've also grabbed my little wax and you can pick these up at any craft store. So basically you just go into, I think like the notions section and this is wax. And all you do is you take your, it has little uh, ridges and grooves here. So you just take your string and you run it through here like this like so a few times over and it will become wax thread like I can already feel the wax on there so I like to do my books with wax thread you don't have to do wax thread if you don't want to or if you don't use that just use what you have or use what you like but I like mine to be waxed so that's what I'm gonna do you need some kind of pen or marker you need your all and be careful working with the awl because it is a sharp tool. You also need your ruler and you need a little clip or two depending on how you do your signatures when you sew them in. And today for my cup I have my, it's got water in it, let me drink. Mm. Water. My keep it odd cup with my Starbucks sleeve. <laughs> because I'm clumsy and that that cup was gifted to me by my buddy in uh, Washington. So I think that covers up all the basics. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so once again, considering the fact that we are making a true junk journal, I would like to note that none of this needs to be perfect. I'm gonna move the signatures aside because we need to focus on the base for a second. None of this needs to be perfect, so don't feel like any pressure to, you know, oh, you know, make sure everything is so good and right. And even if you're doing a single signature, you probably can skip this step because you don't really need to measure anything out. And even though we're doing a junk journal, you don't really need to measure this out. But I always say that I try not to let my personal OCD get in the way of my crafting. However, there are times like when I'm doing signatures, like I really need them to be straight. <laughs> So I'm not going to be as persnickety as I am usually, but I do want to try and get some sort of semblance of straight signatures for my book. And like I said, some of you already may be past this point. Some of you already have bound your signature or signatures into your book, and that's fine. Some of you are not even doing a hardcover, and that's fine. So if you're just doing a single signature, you know, just get your signature into your book your soft cover book the best way that you prefer and I'm going to show how I'm going to do it for this. Today, because like I said, I don't want to make it too convoluted, we have our scrap piece of paper so if you don't want to write in your book, you can use this scrap to begin formulating your template for where you're going to punch your holes for your signatures. So this part 
we know like we have four signatures, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is just find, I can move this over here. I can find the center. I want to just make sure that it's straight. I can find the center of my little scrap, which should be inch and a quarter on either side. So inch and a quarter. I'm using my Tim Holtz ruler because to me it's it's my favorite ruler. <laughs> but it's to me it's really easy because you can just count and figure things out and then it has the zero here which is your centering point. So I'm just going to make a little mark there and then I know that I don't want to put a signature like right here because that's going to be on the edge of the spine, right? So roughly we'll say nothing in this area, nothing in this area. So we know that I have four signatures. Again, your book might be smaller. I'm making my book that's so it's going to be tailored to me. You make yours so that it fits and works for what you want to use yours for. Okay, so what I'm going to do is usually like you can see I've made some tick marks, tick marks here. Usually I will start counting out and making notches for where I want my signatures to go. But I like, again, we're just doing a junk journal and I want to keep it simple. So all I'm going to do is I'm, I've got my ruler here and I'm just going to mark out four lines where I think they look good, where I would want my signatures to go. Actually, I think I want this one more like right here, right here, right here and right here. So not perfect. Again, I'm trying to not do that to myself in this instance. And then I'm just going to make some lines. So one, and you want to make sure that your paper is straight because otherwise everything that we're doing is for not. Two. Three. and four. So again, it's not perfect and I don't really care. I'm just going to fold this in half. So that's going to tell me where my center point is on the long way. And I like to do a five hole pamphlet stitch. If you don't really know what a five hole pamphlet stitch is, I have a video on my channel where I've done a tutorial where there are single signatures and a hard cover, or sorry, multiple signatures and a hard cover. So I will link that below if you're interested in seeing the full proper tutorial. <laughs> so I'm gonna just come in about an inch over here, about an inch over here, and about right here, and about right here, and then of course my center. So I'm just gonna mark off those lines now. Depending on the size of your book, you actually may already have a template depending on your size and if you save your previous templates or not. I don't think I have one this big, so just going to get it done really quick. Last one. So now I've got my little template, my very <laughs> rudimentary template, and everywhere that there's a cross point like this, that's where your holes are going to go, depending on if you're doing one, two, three pamphlet or one, two, three, four, five pamphlet stitch. Okay. The next thing that you want to do before you move on though, is make sure that you mark off where the top is because you want to keep it consistent across the board. Okay. That part is done. Now the next thing that you can do is line up your template with your spine, take your all, and then what I'm going to do is just gently start to poke through so that you have enough pressure because remember I've doubled it, tripled up my chipboard so I'm not going to be able to press through this just as I am. But I've got little guidelines here now to where my uh, points are. So I'm just going to do that here. Sorry, I'm that honk cut me off. <laughs> I'm just going to do that here quickly and then go on to the next step, making little slight marks where every intersection is. Okay. 
So I don't know if you can see it, but I've got all my little marks here where they need to be. So the next thing that you should do, if you have like an old phone book or something that you don't care about puncturing through, now you can really get in here with your awl and start to really poke through the holes. So you see my holes getting bigger. So I'm gonna go through and poke through all my holes through the chipboard and I will be back with the next step. Okay, so now I fully have got all of the holes for my signatures into my spine. And at this point here, it is worth noting that there are several different ways that you can bind your book. So if you don't prefer to uh, poke the holes through your spine or do any kind of sewing of the signatures at all, there are several different ways that you can look up online to see different ways that you can bind your book. So that is, it's not required to be done this way. This is just the way that I'm doing it. So now that I've got this prepared and ready to go, the next thing that I'm gonna get prepared is my thread, which this is an extra step that I usually don't have to do because I do use waxed thread, thread that's waxed already, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do is measure out four pieces of thread to use to sew in my four signatures. The rule of thumb that I usually use is like, so I have the tip here, so one, two, and just about three is way more than enough. And this is, this is more than plenty for what you will need to sew in a single signature. So I'm gonna do this uh, times four. So I've got all my four pieces here for my four signatures. They're all cut out and now what I'm going to do is, like I told you before, I'm going to run this thread through my little wax uh, thing here and I'm going to do this to all my four pieces. It opens so that you can replace the, the wax as it gets low. Now that's better. Alright, so I'm going to do that to the other three and I will be right back. It also opens so that you can spin this little wax wheel because you do like divvy, you do get like divots into the actual um, wheel as you use it, so. Oh, how could I forget? We also need a needle. <laughs> so you'll need some kind of needle like this to sew your signatures in with. So what I like to do is just have my first one ready to go and I'm gonna set that one right up here at the top so that I can just easily grab it away from the rest so that it doesn't get tangled. My cover's ready. So here's my, my signature. Well, these are my four signatures. If you care which order yours go in, uh, take note that you need to start with the one that's gonna be in the furthest back. I don't care really, but I'm gonna just open up my center of the signature here. I'm okay with however the pages are. I don't really, I'm not gonna to be too um, picky about how the pages are for this book, as long as they're just even here and here. So if they are, I am going to take a little clip and then take my template and fold it along one of these lines where we've drawn our, you know, the line for our template. And again, you'll probably need some kind of old phone book or something to sit your signature in just to be safe because we are working with our all. And then you're just gonna use your all to poke through each of your holes at the junction points where the lines meet, okay? So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've used my template and you can see it perfectly lines up with the template, which means it's perfectly gonna line up here. So I now have my thread ready to go. So I'm gonna start with my five hole pamphlet stitch and if you're doing a single, single signature, when I do this signature, when I sew it in, it will be the same for you if you're doing single signature, hard or soft cover, and five pamphlet. So I'm gonna start through the center. Ooh, my water. 
and go up to the hole that's right above the center one. This book is huge, so that is definitely a new kind of challenge. I have to bring it closer because I can't see. Oh my gosh, this book is giant. Okay. There we go. And I did start on the furthest, furthest one back, remember, because we're starting from the back of the book. So then we're gonna go from the, so we went out through the middle, in through the up hole, the hole above it. Then we go to the hole above that and go back in and out. And then we're going to take it, so here's where we came out. So we're gonna take it back into that hole that we just came from. Okay, like so. And then the hole that we just came from is the hole that's near the middle hole, right? So you wanna go down to the bottom to the same the same thing. So the one that's next to the middle, the one that's next to the middle. So in through that, in through there. <laughs> okay. Okay. And then we're gonna take it in through the very bottom hole. Like so. I'm sorry, and I know I'm turning this book a lot, but it's kind of the way that I do this. And so now you really wanna make sure your strings are getting pretty tight because you won't be able to go back and, it's confusing. I mean, you can go th go back through and tighten it, but it's, it's, it's like tightening your shoestrings. Okay, so we're gonna go, you see how there's just an empty space here? We're gonna take it right back through that hole that we just came from, like so. And then the final one is through the center hole in that same row. Okay, and then I like to make sure that thread is on either side of this center piece of thread here, like so, one and one. And then I tie it in a knot And then I go the opposite way from the previous knot. And there we go. First signature success. Okay, so it's basically gonna be the same thing exactly for the other three signatures. I, I'm gonna do it off camera just because it's gonna be agonizing for me to do this three more times with you guys. <laughs> So if you need to rewatch what I just did, then you can take it back, rewind it back, and follow along with me how I did this signature, okay? And I'll be right back. And, woohoo, our signatures are in. Ain't that grand. It's now ready. It's ready for all the fun stuff to go inside of it. Oh, yes. So, I already started adding. <laughs> I had a little sticker and I was like, I need somewhere to put this because I want to save it. Ah, my junk journal. <laughs> Woohoo! We did it. And so, as you can see, we've got a nice little binding here. Nice and sturdy. Signatures are in. Everything is good to go. Book has room to grow a little. I don't know if it'll have enough, but it's got some. Yeah, I need to figure out how much time we have left. Actually, I was just thinking, and I wanted to take a minute here to say something. So at this point, at this phase that we're at right here, you have technically, technically uh, fulfilled a big portion of the challenge. I would say probably like 90%. So the reason why I'm saying that is because we have taken junk and we have made it a, a book, a junk journal now. It is up to you at this point 
whether you want to, I'm going to continue on. I'm going to probably get most of this filled up with you guys for the rest of the, you know, the challenge for this month, because I, I know that for me, I want my book to be like a, a combination of like a gratitude journal and a smash book and a glue book and a, this is probably meaningless to somebody else, but it means something to me. So I'm going to stick it in my book kind of book. So the, that's the, those are the things that I have in mind for my book. Now, the reason why I say it, you can continue on to this path with me and we can get our books like filled up and continue on the challenge, or you can veer off and you can start adding different things to your book, depending on what you want it to be. So maybe you built yours to be an art book. Maybe you built yours to be a book that you can do random like writing in. Maybe you built yours to be an art book. So maybe you want yours to be a stash book. So at this point, it's really kind of up to you how you want to treat your book. I can't really tell you what to do with your book, but I will continue on and show, show you what I am going to do with my book and that giant boxes, <laughs> those giant boxes of junk that I have. So junk journal challenge continues on. So I'm trading in my book binding tools. I've the ones that I've left from what we just used are the scissors, the pen and the bone folder. Again, I don't, I always just grab this just in case cause I might need it. I might not. And then I've also just gone ahead and I've grabbed my glues and you might want to, I don't know, grab markers or crayons or anything like that that you might also want to use as we start working through our book. For me, I don't really, I don't know that I'm going to go in exact order. Like, I don't, I'm not necessarily going to be too particular about, okay, let's start at the beginning and we're going to fill it to the end. No, I'm going to put stuff wherever I feel like it goes, where it needs to be. And I will know when this book is finished or complete because... A, I can't add anything else to it, or B, because that's how I feel. So that is what I'm going to do. This isn't really like a date specific kind of book. Like I've got random stuff in a box. Like there, it's impossible to be date specific. So I'm going to grab my box and then maybe we can go ahead and get started with popping some junk in here. And then next time we come back, we'll carry on with adding more junk into our book. So let me grab the box. <laughs> Every time I stop Every time I stop talking, I think of something new that I need to say. Um, I had saw a couple comments from people who were saying, you know, like they love the idea of a junk journal and they love this idea and they really want to do it, but they couldn't wrap their mind around having things that are seemingly purposeless or pointless or meaningless in their books. And to that, I say this is again where it kind of like veers off into what what means something to you so for example this is like a little <laughs> um you know when you buy the little ankle socks that just cover your feet if you're gonna wear flats this is from that it means nothing to me it means nothing right now but I saved it because potentially I can do some art on this I can journal on this I can do several things to this and make it something that's personable to me and stick it in my book Contrarily, I have these little Vans tags for my shoes now. And then I also have this little tag from um, some backpacks that I bought for me and my mom. So these seem like they might not mean anything, but they do to me. And so when I put this in my book, I'm going to know that when I see this, oh, I bought my mom and myself some security backpacks when we went traveling. Something like this, the hanger from a dry cleaner, it's kind of meaningless, but it's pretty. <laughs> and this is like an example of something like when you see something when you go to a restaurant or something like that and you want to save it, it's because you're drawn to it. So it could just be something that you want to put in your book just because you like looking at it. There's not much more to it than that. So I wanted to kind of like go over those differences briefly something that you can turn into meaningless, wait, <laughs> something meaningless that you can turn into something meaningful, something that's seemingly meaningless, but it is meaningful to you, 
and then something that you just like to look at. Okay, so categorize it how, however you feel most comfortable. So that's what I wanted to say about that. I know I'm probably talking a lot, but I try, I'm still reading through and responding to comments, comments from the previous videos. So I'm trying to, you know, these things pop into my head as we're going through. Okay. So, and if you have like a lot of something in particular, you might want to dedicate a certain page to it. Cause like I've told you before, like I like vans. So I have like a bunch of like vans kind of ephemera so maybe i want to like start building out a page that's dedicated specifically to vans you know what i mean so <clears throat> that's just something else to keep in mind like you don't have to puzzle every single page together in totality okay all right i think i've said enough <laughs> so oh the other thing you might want to use instead of glue is a stapler you can totally just staple things in. You can stitch them in with thread if you're trying to get rid of certain pieces of thread. Oh, there's another. <laughs> um, certain pieces of thread, you know, so it's up to you. So I'm just going to dig in and see what I see first. So we can maybe start with this little bag, which is the bag of stuff that I showed initially. Um, I have some Starbucks here, so I know that I probably will have a lot of these Starbucky <laughs> sleeves. And see how I just popped it open? It could look good here because it's kind of like oceany, and we know that the Star Starbucks lady is a siren. So I can start gluing these in maybe, and I can also leave them open as pockets if I want to. So why don't I just do that? Like there's no right or wrong and there doesn't really even have to be a reason for anything. It's really just whatever you feel like. So I'm going to smash this and I also kind of want to smash it to reduce the bulk because it is corrugated. So I'm going to smash on it to kind of reduce it a little bit. That thickness. And I've got several of these that I'll probably <laughs> come back and put on this page. But I can leave these open now. So you see I've glued the bottom. So I can leave this open now as a pocket. Or if I even wanted to, you don't have to save the whole thing. You could tear this, in fact, because it is um, perforated. You could recycle the other piece and glue this piece down and make that a pocket. So I think I'll do that instead. Okay. So we've got we've got something in our book. Alrighty. Next, what else do I have? So I saved this little box, mostly because I like the front of it. It's a tea box. So I'm gonna cut the little image off of the front. And my boss gave me this tea and I really liked it. It's a really great tea for fall. So let's see. Oh, so it's got kind of like <clears throat> red and black in here. So I'm just going to glue this down just because I like the way it looks. I could make it a pocket, but I don't really need to make everything a pocket. <laughs> and I don't want to because that's just going to leave it open for more space to be filled, you know, more bulk in my book. Okay, so glue. And I don't want to cover everything that looks super awesome, so maybe I'll put it right here. Done. So here again, bone folder. <laughs> I like to make sure, you know, I, it's my book, so if anything does not glue per perfectly or properly, I can come back and fix it myself. Ooh, I have a bunch of these little yogurt things that I saved. Why don't we get those onto a page? So I'm just going to pick a page, pick a page, any page. Maybe we'll do it here. So I'm just going to take my, I don't know, I might use Fabri-Tac for this. We'll see. I might actually have to use double-sided tape. I guess we'll end up seeing what, what works like as we work through the book. 
if it doesn't stick because this is like foil or something, I can always come back in and use my my tape. Everyone has a happy ending. If you're not happy, it's not the end. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to stick. Well, let me give it a chance to stick. <laughs> what I can also do is I can come in with some washi tape. which I'm sure most of us have a pretty good amount of. Okay, and stick it down, and that'll help it. Again, I'm not terribly worried if things don't stay because it's my book. Even that side was pretty. <laughs> so this is just gonna be a page of like foil quotes. <laughs> and it's because I like these quotes and that's what I want in my book. I don't know if you guys have ever made a smash book, but it's really kind of like where I'm kind of wanting to go with that because that's kind of like one of the things that I did to actually even get me started in making books was making a, filling up a smash book. And I really enjoyed that a great deal. So we have listened to your favorite song, which is something that means something to me. We have Kit Charm, How Charming. We have Buy Yourself Flowers. And I can cut these down too if I want. Like they don't all have to stay in that shape. This one says Dance in the Mirror. Here we have Buy Yourself Flowers. So you see, it's just fun. And these I did wash off because I don't want food in my book. <laughs> okay, so I've got those glued in. I'm gonna add a little bit of tape. I can also staple them. That's another choice. You can. You can glue, you can tape, you can staple, you can dance if you want to. And if your friends don't staple, well, they're no friends of mine. Okay. Doesn't have to be a beautiful, like, it doesn't have to be, like, beautiful by anyone's standards but your own. I've seen that a lot, too, because... Some people are like, oh, I don't feel like I'm doing it right, or it's not good enough, or this or that. No such thing. No such thing, my dear. It is only what you want to do. You and only you. Okay. Cool. And I've got space to add more if I want to or something else. So let's see. Ooh, tea. More tea. Maybe I should put these over on my tea page. I've got a Starbucks. I've got more Vans. Maybe we should start our a Vans page also. We, we can do that. There's more Starbucks. So let's do that. And I also have these little things that I saved. So since I know that I'm kind of formulating a tea page. I want to say too, if you do tear these apart... You can save these and use this side as layering. Like when you do um, like your tags, collages, things like that. If you want like a texturized background piece, you can use the other side like this as a layering textural piece. So you can save those and just add, you know, just the pretty Starbucks lady in the front. So I'm going to come back over to my tea page. I have this. I can just kind of like roughly cut it. And the rest, what you don't use, you can totally recycle. Oh, I think I'll just glue this on, on the page somewhere. I just, I like it. <laughs> no real reason other than that. Okay. And you know, this was a different tea that I picked up. 
from a little like artisan kind of shop. And then these little tea tags, I can just glue them on here. They don't have, oh, wait a minute. They do, they do. I saved them because they do have something cool on the other side. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do for these then is I will put them down like this. And I'm gonna take washi and just stick those down. Yeah, I could have grabbed some red washi, but I don't really care. Okay. Cool. So now I can flip those over and see the little quotes that are on the other side. All right. So we'll do one more page for today. And the next time we come back, we will continue working in our junk journal. At this point, it'll really just be us kind of like hanging out and crafting together. <laughs> because I can't, I don't know, it's hard. I don't think I can teach you what you like. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense when I'm explaining it. Okay, so I had an idea. I decided to put my van spread on this page because I can use these sides all for vans. And because I like this side of the tag, and I also know that I can write on this side if I want to, I thought that I would take, I have an abundance of brads, so various sizes in here. I don't really care what they look like. So I can take these little brads and I can just punch a hole through the page and stick the tag in through there and voila, tag. And then when I flip it, you can see I've got that fun little checkered piece that I like. So I'm gonna do that here. Um, I do have a brad setter, but <laughs> I don't think I really need it at the moment. I'm just making sure they're flat so they don't pu puncture any of my other pages. Cool, so vans, vans, sweet. And then this is the sticker. Ah! That's okay, I'm just gonna try and piecemeal this to my page. <laughs> So I have this side and this little piece. I know some people are probably like, you're so ridiculous at this point, throw it away. No, no, <laughs> I will not. Okay, so there's that. And then I'll just glue this down because it's not terribly important to me, but I, I do want to save it. Now my, these are kind of a little different. So for these, what I think I'll do is take this string that I said I had too much of. They are stickers, so I could just peel off the sticker and stick it in my book, but I just, I want the whole tag. So I'm gonna stick it through. And I have two pairs, so why not just put them together? And I'm just gonna tie a little knot. like that. And then what I will do is I'm going to take another brad and poke it through. Oh, actually, you have to do it a little different. You have to <clears throat> put your you know, sandwich the thread in between the space of the brad like that. It's kind of, it's hard to see because it's so small, but, and then I'll poke this through. Okay, so now I have these two. 
and I don't care that they're going to be flimsy flimsy. Not a word. <laughs> so here, <clears throat> I think again, I will just tack this on because I can still slide it over and read what's on the back if I want to just remember about this particular pair of Vans. And I want to do it close to the edge for this one because it does have writing, and, uh, yeah, writing on the back and I want to be sure I can read all of that. Sweet. Uh, what else do we have? So these are stickers and I have a bunch of these so I am just going to peel this off and use it as a sticker. I can, I can keep this and just glue it on here, you know. It's sticky. It's slippery though so it might not stick very well. So we'll just stick my little sticker on there. And is that all the vans I have for now? Yeah. Okay, so I think maybe I'll just put this on here. Doesn't really, doesn't really matter. You know, it's like when I, when I see it in my book, I will know what it is. So there you go. Okay. What else did I take out? Oh, we'll go back to the Starbucks page. So if I would, if I wanted to just, so what you could do is you could to peel off this corrugated part. If you have the patience to do that, peel it off. And again, you can save this to reuse if you want to. So now we just have like what is paper basically, right? And if you wanted to, you could back this with coffee stain paper or you could just write on the back of this about the time that you went to have coffee with so-and-so and tuck it in. And then you'll have a bunch of different little pieces, uh, you know, that you can remember about times that you went to have coffee. So this here is a gift card. And I will probably just put this in a pocket for now just because I, I know what, I got this from my boss and I, I'll write about it later. So that can go in there. Yeah, we've got a few things in here already. We're off to a good start. This I put in, like I was telling you earlier, I put this. This is the sticker that came from the box that I got from HelloFresh. My friend sent me a trial for HelloFresh. So I stuck the sticker in here already from the box and then the first recipe that I've already finished and made, I just put it in here and I can still see the recipe if I want to, but these recipes are also online. So, I mean, if I have it electronically, I can just stick it in my book and use it in my junk journal. All right, so I think that should be good for today. Next time we'll come back and start, you know, just putting some more junk in our book in random places and uh, start seeing what we get. So I think, I think you guys have had enough for me for today and I think you guys are getting the idea of what I'm doing with my book and I, and I really like what you guys are doing, what I'm seeing that you guys are doing with yours. So um, I think that is going to wrap it up for me for now. Be sure to stay tuned because you never know what direction this odd flock of ours is heading into. And until next time, toodaloo.